Hey everyone, it's Troy with AC Guys, and we are at the final stage of our installation of the ventilation equipment for the CBD extraction booth. And before we even get started on uh, moving forward in the video, I just want to point out, because this won't get much attention for the rest of the video, but this is probably the most important piece as far as a safety element that this entire booth will have. And so inside of this canister here is the ethanol sensor. It's an infrared sensor. It is a very precise and very sensitive sensor. It detects ethanol uh, or whatever gas we set this uh, sensor to uh, so that it can detect, uh, I believe it's down to 20 parts per billion of uh, particulate. So uh, this piece right here is temporary. This is only going to be used right now. Uh, once we get this powered up, we will use this to calibrate the sensor. We will use a, a methane mixed with oxygen and nitrogen. And the combination of the three is very precise and gives uh, the same uh, properties as if there were ethanol being sensed so uh, but once this is operational this bottom piece will be removed so I'm gonna go ahead and start to play this which is a little different from most of our videos we mostly uh, just kind of uh, scroll through and stop and uh, give some uh, some feedback on what we're doing so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of play some of this so you can see the inside here so right now I'm pulling off the display. You can see that has its own control board, which is then wired in to this next piece. And I'm going to actually stop it here. And on this board here, this is the relay board. This board provides no power. However, it does allow uh, current to flow through it. So these three black boxes here are actually relays. And we can set these in a normally open or a normally closed position. And if you think about uh, a normally open or normally closed, if you think about a light switch, uh, when the light switch is turned off, that would be normally open because it does not allow the electricity to flow through it. And when the light switch is on, that would be what we call a normally closed position because it closes or connects the connection inside and allows the electricity to flow through to the light. So that's what this is. Uh, you can see that we've uh, removed two of the sets of wires and plug. Those will not be used if at a later time the customer wants to add uh, any sort of uh, emergency lighting or uh, whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. Uh, we can still use those relays uh, for that purpose. So I'm going to go ahead and forward through this. And you'll see the next board. And actually, I think I'll probably fast forward through this and spare you from having to watch me. Oh, wrong way. So let's go the other way. And you'll see just different angle here. Here's still a, another uh, view of where the ethanol sensor actually sits. Uh, it sits in here in this canister. And again, is a, a very delicate and precise uh, instrument. So as we keep going through, I'm now going to pull off this relay board, and if you remember uh, in the previous videos, if you've watched it, that relay board is basically just, just like a, a switch. And so now, what we're going to see is the main power board. And you can see these three wires, the red, uh, white, and the black coming in here. Something that's uh, unique uh, to, in, in general, to the, to the HVAC industry is we mostly work with alternating current or AC current, which is similar to like a, a light socket in your house. And on this instrument, it's actually powered by DC current, which is direct current, and it's 24 volts. So uh, the, all this wiring that you see in here right now is uh, temporary. It was provided by the factory. And actually, let's do that again. So this here, these wires here, uh, this was installed at the factory uh, for testing so that they can verify that the unit worked before they shipped it out. So that will be removed. 
and we'll be installing our own uh, control wiring and uh, relay wiring. So I'm going to go ahead and let this play. And you get an idea there of how this works. And then I'm going to go ahead and stop this there. So as I had mentioned, these wires here that came from the factory, we will remove. And the electricians have ran us power now uh, for both our DC, uh, our DC wiring, our DC power, and our uh, high voltage uh, wire, which will go up and control a contactor that will kick on the 17,000 CFM fan. And to put that into perspective, uh, a house, the biggest air conditioner you can have for a house, provides 2,000 CFM. So this fan basically moves the same amount of air as nine household air conditioners. So it moves a lot of air. And we'll get probably into that uh, in just a bit here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward. And I'm actually going to let the video from here kind of play out because this will give you an idea of how our team works. And while this is a, a very serious job, which all of them are, but this one is, is a very uh, delicate and um, potentially dangerous job uh, as far as the application that it's being used in. And so I'm going to hit play. I'm going to let you guys listen to the audio. And I'm just going to tell you beforehand that uh, I have a bald spot. And Tony, who is one of our uh, lead techs, likes to give me a hard time for it. And so he's taking the video for me right now. Uh, he's going to move the camera from where it should be to the back of my head. And then I'll end up turning around and realizing what he's doing. And you'll kind of see the reaction and just get an idea of kind of the, uh, you know, the teamwork and, and the great group that we have here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and play this and, and be quiet for a second and let you watch. <laughs> All right, so now we're on to the next phase, which is actually bringing the control wires in that the electricians have brought to us and getting it actually into our sensor. So let's go forward just a little bit. And you're going to see that there are two sets of wires. There's one set here. And a second set here. One will be for the high voltage. And then the other will be for the low voltage DC. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of just play this for a second let you kind of see what's going into this you can see uh, on the left side here this you know all the different components of the sensor and so Tony's gonna to get that through it's a pain in the butt because this wire is uh, pretty stiff or pretty rigid so it uh, takes a lot of patience to do this so I'm gonna go ahead and Forward through this and give you an idea and I may have just gone the wrong way let me play this all right All right. Sorry about that. I know there's a little dead spot there, but I'm going the wrong way. I may be smart, but nobody's ever accused me of being a videographer or editor. So Tony's going to get this through, and now you can see that he has it from this junction box right here. And through the flex seal and actually into our sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going with this. He's putting now the second set of wires through. And now he's going to tighten it up. And now we are 
essentially ready to wire in uh, or, or land these wires basically. So uh, at this point in the video, I've already landed the DC incoming voltage that powers this unit. I'm now landing the uh, high voltage to the relay, which again is a, a normally open relay. So uh, just to kind of explain that, when the incoming, uh, so we always have power coming in to this relay right here, and I'm just going to pause this real quick. So there's always power coming into it, but until this sensor detects a specified amount of ethanol in this booth, it will not allow the high voltage to go through that relay and go up to a contactor that will turn on our fan. So I'm just going to kind of fast forward through this. And then now you can see I'm putting on the display. And then this last part, as I'd mentioned before, and it's actually, let me back up a little bit. Actually, no, we'll just go. So I'd mentioned before in, in another video about how fine the, the threading is on this and how many turns it takes to get uh, this cap on. And again, the purpose of that is because this is the explosion proof. They want this seal as tight as possible. So it's a very, very tight, uh, airtight connection. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this play. You'll also notice, let me back up here just a second, that you'll see that on the cover of this is glass. And the purpose of that glass is so that if there is a spark inside of there or if the display itself were to short out, that it would not allow a spark to occur in the booth itself where it could create the explosion hazard again, but it would be, uh, it would happen inside of this case and therefore would not present any danger to anyone in the building uh, or surrounding areas. So just kind of watch how many turns it takes. All right, and now we're to that orange seal that I'd mentioned earlier, and we're tight, and now we've created an explosion-proof condition. So I'm going to forward through this here now and get us to the point. So we're, we're done now with the wiring, and we're at the point now where we're getting ready to turn the sensor on for the first time, which is exciting for us uh, because it means we're at the end, and this has been a, a long process. It's been an exciting process, uh, and we're, we're ready to fire this booth up. So, And I know our customer is excited because now they can open their doors for business and, and start generating some income. So I'm going to go ahead and let this play, and I'm going to let you kind of just listen to some commentary uh, that happened on the job site. And so we have an electrician working with us right now and obviously our own techs. And you can kind of hear, you'll hear them saying, uh, you know, 115 volts is on now, 230 volts is on now. And just to give you kind of a, a background on that, this sensor uh, or the, the control for the sensor, if you think about like a laptop computer, you plug it into your outlet on the wall, that's 115 volts. But then it supplies a, a different type of power source to your laptop. Uh, this thing works the same way. So when he says he's turned on the 115 volts, that means that he's basically plugging in the laptop uh, cord to the wall. And once he does that, you'll see our screen will come on. And then because th of the way that this is wired and because it is such a so sophisticated system, one of our concerns was the fan kicking on when it wasn't supposed to. So uh, this was a, a, a great moment. Uh, it was an exciting moment for us. You won't hear anybody in here uh, screaming or yelling, but you, you can kind of hear the, the conversation. So I'm going to go ahead and let this play. And in just a second here, you will hear the electrician saying he's providing power. And there's our, our screen, which is a great sign. And just real quickly... The unseen great sign is that the fan didn't kick on, which you're going to kind of hear here uh, as, as far as conversation in a second.
All right, so you just heard that. So we're going to move forward. And this is now the fan. And I just want to point out right away that this is a temporary uh, uh, fitting on the screen. We only did this so that we can test the unit. The This screen here, that looks kind of like a, a thick chicken wire almost, that will be permanent. But to hold that up, we will have a, a different, um, a, a, a different, um, oh my gosh. It, it's going to be a different setup. It'll be a cleaner look. You won't see those ripples and it, it'll be more secure. So, uh, we're, and now at this point, we're going to start this fan. And something that I want you guys to notice is you'll see at the top of the video here, uh, yeah, at the top of your screen here, where it's, it's all black in there now. When this fan starts up, and again, remember that this fan basically moves the same amount of air as nine household air conditioners. So when this thing kicks on, it's going to open up, they're called backdraft dampers at the top. And it's going to basically pull all the air from inside the booth to outside and let that uh, vapor dissipate. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. You can watch it in real time. And as soon as then, you'll see daylight. Okay, that's that's daylight coming in from the roof. And as you saw up here, it went from dark to light. And it's kind of hard to see in the video, but um, those dampers were because of, of the volume of air that this emergency purge fan is moving. They are uh, shaking quite a bit. So now we're at the point of our installation of actually uh, testing the constant volume fan. The way that this system is set up is it has a constant volume fan, which basically slowly removes ethanol from the air to keep it clean and or to keep the, the ethanol uh, levels low. And if for some reason there was a, a spill or some sort of emergency in the booth, then that secondary fan that we just watched would kick on. So right here is our switch for the constant volume fan. Anytime the uh, CBD extraction booth is in use, this fan would be on. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of give you a rundown of the entire process. So the fan is on, and the fan, the constant volume fan, which is a 3,000 CFM fan, which again is still moving more air than your average, well, than every household air conditioner, that air is being sucked up through there. And I want to zoom in and show you that on this fan, or in this grill right here, there is a carbon filter. And the purpose of that carbon filter because this is a CBD extraction, which comes from a hemp plant, uh, the hemp smells very similar to, uh, to marijuana. And so this carbon filter will remove that smell because all of this air is being vented to outside. And so to eliminate the possibility of outside of this uh, warehouse smelling, you know, uh, giving off the aroma of marijuana, that filter is put into place. So you can go ahead and play this. And again, you can see both fans here. This is our emergency purge fan. And this is going to be the constant volume fan. And so what you're going to see next is because these fans are removing air from this room, and this room is essentially airtight, when the fan's turned on, we have dampers that will allow outside air to come in to replace the air, uh, the air that's being removed. So I'm going to go ahead and play this, and you're going to see, and I'm going to go ahead and pause this. This is one of the dampers. There's also the same size damper on the other side. So when the fan turns on and creates a suction inside of the room, it pulls that damper open, and it allows air from the outside of the room to enter in so you can see right now it's barely open
And you can see people on the outside. The, the noise levels on this are, are very quiet for, for this fan. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm just going to let this play. And I want you to watch so you can see. You know, oop. Where do we go here? Oh, and I went a little too far. I'm actually going to back up here. Apologize for this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let this play from here. And all right, well, evidently that part of the video cut off. So now this is basically the, the final test. And this is going to show you how much air that emergency purge fan removes from inside the booth. I'm standing outside of the booth right now. And when that fan kicks on, we're going to show you those dampers from the outside. And you'll be able to see exactly uh, how the system will work. So I'm going to go ahead and play this for a second. And the fan is going to kick on. And watch right here. You see that damper open? So that's bringing in fresh air into the booth. And it's not only is it bringing fresh air so that the employees inside have air to breathe, oxygen to breathe, but what it does is because ethanol is heavier than oxygen, the ethanol will sit lower towards the floor. And so in our design of this uh, booth or the ventilation for this booth, what we did is, is we uh, strategically and purposely placed these dampers at the bottom so that as it sucks air from the outside of the booth, it comes across the bottom of the room and then gets sucked up. So it's clearing out that vapor almost immediately. So I'm going to go ahead and let this play, kind of show you the other side. The other damper is open as well. And same thing, same effect as the air comes in from the bottom here. It's going to sweep through the bottom of the room. Remove all of the dangerous, uh, explosively uh, potential uh, vapor. And it's going to suck it from the top of the fan. And now we've shut the fan down. And you can see as the suction is uh, eliminated, that damper auto-closes. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, we would be happy to come out for you if you are looking at... Uh, doing anything with the CBD uh, uh, grow houses and just any of your HVAC and refrigeration needs in general.